Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 209, and I am Lisa, your host, also known as Fiber Nymph on Ravelry and Instagram. Today is Monday, July 18th. 18th? Yes, 18th. Um, and I am newly back from Florida. Um, and I will say, I'm recording this after I've recorded the whole podcast because the first time I recorded, I did a very long intro and in telling you about. Florida and all the stuff that went on and I realized that nobody needs to hear all that so I'm just doing the beginning part again so this is Lisa from the future I guess <laughs> the way Katie always talks about it on her podcast um yeah I just felt like I needed to probably rein that in a little bit anyway um I did have to go down to Florida for my stepdad's um memorial service he did pass away last Saturday evening um and it was a very nice time with family down there. I went down Wednesday, came back yesterday. Um, my stepsisters were down there. My aunt was still there. Um, and so it was, it was just good. I mean, not good time, but good, you know, good family time at a time when we needed, you know, people needed to be together. So it was hard, but it was good. And the memorial service was beautiful and funny. Um, which might sound weird, but it it celebrated my stepdad's life perfectly because that's the kind of guy he was, you know. He just had this quirky sense of humor, and everybody knew him for that, and just his really gregarious personality. And um, it was it was awesome. It was it was a perfect celebration of his life. Um, and I got to spend some one on one time with my mom, which was good. It's been a while, and it was good for both of us, I think. Um, anyway, so the downside to that was, like, it was five days out of my life that I thought I was going to have to prepare for SSK, and I did not have that. Um, but you know what? That is what it is, and I'm not worried about it at this point. I have enough to take with me to SSK to vend, and that'll be fine. Um, anyway, so let me say hello to... I didn't write it down, so I need to look on the um, on the group. Sorry, I said it the first time when I recorded. Um, Debbie, Debbie from Texas, introduced herself on the ninety percent knitting welcome board. So, welcome, Debbie. Thank you so much for watching, um, and I appreciate you introducing yourself. So, anyway. I'm going to jump back to what I already recorded earlier and um, we'll jump in with the knitting now. Okay, so sorry for the choppiness, but trust me, it's way better that you see this little short introduction than like the 15 minute long one that I had here originally. So returning you now to what you should be watching. <laughs> I do actually have knitting because I had a ton of knitting time this trip. That was the weird thing. You know, I was going on this trip for a specific purpose, but really other than that, it was like I didn't have anything I had to do while I was there. And so I had the flight down, the flight back, and five days while I was there. That was pretty much a lot of knitting. So I have finished objects to show you, and I'm realizing I did not grab sock blockers, and I'm not going to hop up to get them now. So you're just going to see these socks without sock blockers. Um, on my way down to Florida last Wednesday, I almost finished the second bullfinch sock. And so I finished it that afternoon at my mom's house. So my bullfinch socks are finished. And they are a fairly matchy-matchy pair. Um, this is the West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply. Um, they're, they're Bird's series of yarns. So this is Bullfinch. I did the heel flaps and turns and the toes in a contrasting gray. Also West Yorkshire, Yorkshire Spinners. Um, I love these socks. They're very nice. I cannot wait to wear them this fall. So they turned out well. They're not they're not as bright and colorful as the pheasant socks that I made for Bill several months ago, but that's okay. He got the, the, hunt, the fun socks, and these are, I mean, these are fun. They're just not super bright, but I do like the colors, so. Anyway, so these socks got finished, so that added some meterage to my um, SSK, or my SSK, my stash dash total, which I'll update that for you in a minute. <laughs> 
But anyway, then the other thing I was knitting on, well, I was knitting on two other things. The other one's not done, so I'm not going to show you that one quite yet. But I worked on the um, Advanced to Go socks. So this was the first one that I had in progress. And I got through most of the rest of this. I think it was it was just past where I was going to put the heel in, I think, the last time you saw it. Um, or where was it? It may have been like right there, right at where I was going to put the heel in. So um, I finished the foot and the toe while I was, I think I finished the toe while I was flying down. And then I'm trying to think now because I didn't have a lot left to finish on this. And so then I moved on to this. Um, and I did that. The heel I know I did once I was at my mom's. And then I cast on the second one while I was down there and I went back and forth between this and my other project that I'm going to show you. And then yesterday flying home I pretty much just banged my way through the rest of this sock. Um, did the whole rest of the foot and the toe and then the heel. And when we landed in Pittsburgh I had like maybe the last two colors of the heel left to go. Um, and I was like, but that was okay. I was glad to be home. Um, so I finished this this morning. So I have another new pair of socks. Yay. And this is my advanced to go colorway, Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This was a short skein. If you remember me telling you about this, I had technical difficulties when we were reskeining it. And so it ended up being a short skein. It had, oh gosh, at least three knots in it, I think, three or four knotted places so there was a lot of weaving in of ends even more so because I did afterthought heels but my original plan for this since it was a short skein I wasn't sure that I was going to have enough yarn to do the heels in the actual stripey yarn but then when I went on this trip I didn't take any other yarn with me and so I thought okay well I'll I'll risk it and I went ahead and I put the first heel in using the stripey yarn and then I started the second sock and I knew that my I did not try to make these matchy because I knew I didn't have the extra yarn to wind off to get here. I needed all the yarn I had. Um, so I started it and I was trying to count how many more yellow stripes I had left in the skein and I thought oh, this is going to run short. But I knew I had close to 300 yards and I rarely ever make socks that are more than that. So I was hopeful and as it turned out, here, oh, let me reach. This is what I had left. <laughs> There's five stripes worth left in here. So it's probably like maybe five grams. I didn't weigh it, but yeah. So that it wasn't quite yarn chicken because it wasn't like I knew as I was getting towards the toe and before I started the heel, I thought I knew I was going to have enough. But um, it, it looked like it was going to be close. So anyway, these are now done and I'm really happy with them. They're fun, happy colors. It's the advanced to go colorway, you know, um, inspired by the Monopoly board colors. So another happy pair of socks. And that brings my stash dash total up to 2,744 meters. I realized as I was putting these totals in my project pages that I, like, I've been doing the conversion. I've been taking yardage and multiplying it times 9.1 or 0.91 um, to get my meterage. And that is actually about a yard less than what Ravelry says the meterage is because I didn't realize, I guess I just never paid attention. When you put your yardage in, you know, how much you used, it will also give you, it gives you both the total in yardage and in meterage. So I went back in in my post in the stash dash thread and I changed all, of, I updated all of my totals to have that, you know, the correct meterage. I mean, I know it's only one meter, but hey, it counts. <laughs> so anyway, yes, so I'm almost up to 3,000 meters and I've got several big projects left to finish that I will finish before the end of this. So I am not at all worried about getting to my 5,000 meter total. So that brings me to the next project that I worked on. And I think I may have talked about, I don't remember if I talked about this on the last podcast or not. I did, it wasn't in my show notes from last time, so I may not have mentioned it. But I decided to cast on, I don't know, maybe I did share this. I can't remember. I'm sorry. My brain's a little mushy right now. Um, the 
Frisian. It's either Frisian or Frisson. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. It's F R I S S O N. Shawl or wrap, shawlette by Brittany Wilson. And I don't know how well you can see what it really looks like. There we go. It's eyelet sections. Um, they come to points and it's eyelet with um, garter sections between it. And it, it just looked really, really cool. Now she has it here in, you know, obviously a solid or a semi solid yarn. So you can really see the patterning pr quite clearly. Plus, it's been blocked. I decided to use my Gales Art double sock blank that I had. Now, that's what I don't know if I showed you. That's I thought maybe I showed you the sock blank, but maybe I didn't. If you go to my Ravelry project page, I did, and I did put a picture up of what the sock blank looked like before I started. It was a Happy Mother's Day sock blank. Um, I got it at Maryland Sheep and Wool two years ago. No. Yeah, not this year, the year before. Um, and so I decided, well, first of all, as I've been knitting this, I realized I will never buy a double sock blank again because it was a pain in the butt. Now, obviously, if you have a double sock blank and you're going to knit two socks at one time with it, it's probably fine. However, that wasn't what I was doing. So I was knitting with one strand and having to wind the second strand into a ball at the same time. Um, which was fine, except as you're unraveling the sock blank, it's twisting around itself, the two strands. Um, so I was constantly having to like put this ball around the other strand to untwist it so I could keep pulling it. Otherwise I was just getting these big knotted areas. I mean, it was fine. It just, it was a little time consuming. So anyway, um, my thought process on this was I was going to knit this shawl with this double sock blank and I was going to knit out you know, the length of it with the first strand. And then when I got through with it, which I just did this morning, I'll take it. And since I wound this, this is the same end that I just ended with. I will work back. So it's kind of like there and back again, <laughs> a shawl's tail. So anyway, that's the second strand, but here is what I have so far on the first strand. Isn't it pretty? I just love these colors. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? She says, sounds conceited, but it's not because I did not dye this sock blank, nor did I, okay, I'm trying to get this flipped around, nor did I design the pattern. So I'm allowed to say it looks nice. Um, now, the thing I'm noticing about this is number one, you're not seeing the eyelets very clearly. I'm going to have to block the bejesus out of this so that you can see the eyelet patterning well. But I think part of the reason you're not seeing it is because it was knit with a sock blank and you know that rum and noodly yarn just looks very very nubby as you're knitting it. Even if you're just knitting stockinette it looks nubbly. So it's a little more textured at this point than it would be if I was knitting it with just normal non-sock blank yarn. But I think once it's blocked, I mean you can see how much it's going to open up. Those eyelet sections are just they're going to open up a lot and I think it'll be fine. Now it is going to be a little busier since it's multiple colors, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, it'll probably camouflage the patterning a little bit in that respect, but I really like the shape of this. Um, my other thought was that I could have done a, not a hitchhiker. I could have done a hitchhiker cause that's a similar shape. You know, the, the rows keep getting longer. And what was the other one? The Bactus, ba Lacy Bactus. I guess there's a Bactus and a Lacy Bactus. I've done the Lacy Bactus before. And that's one where you knit out till you've used half your yarn and then you start knitting and narrowing it. That was actually, I was looking for a shawl like that that I could have done with this. But honestly, I really like how this is turning out. So anyway. I just finished the first strand this morning. That's all that's left of it. And so I'm going to pick up, you know, with the second strand, working my way back down through the colors. And the second half will go much easier because I don't have to unravel a sock blank as I go. Um, I'm knitting this on US 5 needles. I'm using my Knitter's Pride uh, Dreams, which are wooden. You know, I usually feel like these are fairly pointy needles for wooden needles. However, there's a since I'm knitting into a lot of, um, I'm doing a lot of 
yarn overs and knit two togethers. The knit two togethers can be a little bit of a challenge with these needles. Hiya Hiya Sharps would have been much better, but I did not have any in US 5. So I ended up using this one and that's fine. I mean, it's going fine. I'm not having issues. It just, it would probably be easier to get those knit two togethers um, with a pointier needle. But anyway, it's good. It's all good. And honestly, it's not, this pattern is not like a mindless knit. It's not like you can just sit and not think about it because you definitely do have to pay attention and do some counting. But like I'm in the 10th point now and I think there's 15 maybe. How many are there? Sorry, I keep licking my finger. My hands are really dry. Um, oh, there's 13. So I'm in the 10th one. I may just keep going. Depending on how much yarn I have left by the time I finish the 13th one, I may just do another section of my own um, to use up all the yarn. Because I would really like to use all of this yarn if I can. So we'll see how that works out. But um, I mean, obviously these last sections are getting even bigger than the previous ones. So it could use up a whole lot of yarn. We'll see. Um, at any rate, I'm really enjoying it. And it, like I was starting to say, it isn't a mindless knit, but it's the, not really a formula, but the, the patterning, like you're doing the same steps each section and it's easy. It's very memorizable. So I was able to work on this while I was, you know, hanging out and talking to people. It wasn't like I had to be, sh you know, like most lace is. Um, I was able to work on it while we were all hanging out and chatting together and everybody was fascinated by the sock blank. They're like, what is that? Like, are you knitting that? Or that's what you're knitting for? They didn't get the whole, you're unraveling something to knit something else. I know that's a sticking point for a lot of people. Like Bill still doesn't get that. He's like, okay, so you've made this beautiful thing and now people are going to undo it and knit something else. Why wouldn't you just sew that together and use, <laughs> which you can, I know people do that too. But anyway, um, I'm having fun with this project. It's, it's a conversation knit, as Christine from the Yarnings podcast refers to it. You know, anything you can knit while you're being social, a conversation knit. So um, I will probably take this to SSK with me. Actually, I will be taking this to SSK with me because I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of knitting time between now and when I leave for SSK on Wednesday. So I don't anticipate making too much more headway on that. Um, the other thing I realized this morning when I finished these advanced to go socks was that that was the last pair of socks I currently have on the needles, aside from design socks, which I never count those as actual projects. I don't know why, but just fun for me kind of socks. I, cause I finished the rain, the firework socks on the first trip to Florida, which my mother scarfed up. And then I finished the bullfinch socks and now I finished the advanced to go socks. So that's it. I, I can pick new sock yarn and cast on new socks. That's always so much fun. Although I finished two pair of socks. So maybe that means I can cast on two new socks. What's the matter muffin? Oh my gosh. I have got a muffin story to tell you a little bit later. This dog is going to be the death of me yet but I won't go there right now. That'll be for 10%. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'm going to be casting on at least one new pair of socks. So I will have a sock project and this little shawlette to work on while I'm at SSK. I don't think I'm going to take my spinning wheel to SSK this year. I have the last two times I've gone. Number one, I'm not sure I'm going to have space for it. Number two, because usually it sits in my passenger seat, but Bill will be in my, actually, I will be in my passenger seat. Bill will be doing most of the driving because he likes to drive and I can knit and I have to work on my wedding skirt, which did not get any love at all since the last time I reported, but that is going to be my main car knitting project. And I will get that finished between the ride down and the ride back. I'm almost certain that that will get finished. Um, and I may also take my slinky ribs car, uh, pullover to work on in the car. So that'll give me two like big projects that I can work on in the car. I don't want to have to carry those around SSK though. So, you know, anyway, um, so I'll have the, sh the little shallot. I'll have at least one pair of socks. Um, I have to find a third project to take with me to SSK. Actually, the other thing I need to work on in the car probably, and maybe, the first day at SSK is my homework for my class. 
because I have not yet done it. So other than that though, I have to pick a third project to actually work on at SS Cakes. I like to have options. And since I won't have my spinning wheel with me, I won't be spinning. Because usually at SSK, I do a lot of spinning, but this will be an all knitting SSK for me. So anyway, um, I've totally veered off the topic because I wasn't even going to talk about SSK yet, but there you go. So I will be at SSK. If you're going to be there, I can't wait to see you. And um, Bill's coming with me. He's helping me vend and set up for vending and all that. Um, he is, we're bringing his bike, so he has something to do. He loves to ride his bike, and so he's going to ride his bike and he'll probably go to the zoo and do other fun things without me and I feel really bad because I told him well maybe I can take part of Thursday and go with you and do things but then he's like as we were talking about he's like you know what you just need to be at the retreat and do your thing with your peeps and he didn't say peeps that's not a word he says um but anyway so that's what I'm going to be doing so I'll be there hanging out with y'all and I can't wait and can't wait to then and I have a little bit to talk about about that in the shop news section so let's keep going because I'm really rambling at this point I am so sorry um let's see the hat pattern oh my gosh it finally has a name I'm calling it miscellany because basically if you unless you buy a kit you can make it out of any three miscellaneous worsted weight scrap yarns you've got laying around leftovers so I thought miscellany was a good name for it um, I will have kits for that at SSK I apologize profusely that I was not able to get any out and in the shop prior to SSK the way I had hoped I could but you can't plan everything and having to go back to Florida last week just sort of nixed that idea altogether. However, I will be putting all of the kit leftovers from SSK, any that are left from the market, I will put those in the shop like ASAP as soon as I get home and then I will put um, particularly the miscellany kits, I will do more of those and add them to the shop as soon as possible after I get back. Um, anyway, that's where the pattern, the hat, and I also just recently got pictures, so I have to finish up the pattern and put the pictures in and everything. <laughs> My aunt modeled the, the blue one for me. I took it to Florida with me because Bill had modeled the brown one for me, and I needed the blue one, which was a more girly kind of hat. And so I took it with me to Florida thinking, well, my stepsisters will be there. My mom will be there. My aunt will be there. Somebody will model this hat for me. So my, the day I got down there, my aunt had a turquoise blue shirt on, and I said, you match my hat. Would you like to model this for me? I need pictures for the pattern. She said, sure. I'm like, great, let's go outside and you can put this wool hat on in the 100 degree weather because that's exactly what everybody wants to do. So, but she was a good sport and did it for me. Um, anyhow, so let's see, what else? The Knit Along, the Craft the Kit Knit Along is starting August 1st, so that's not too far away. Today is the 18th. That's like actually two weeks from today. So if you're going to be at SSK, I will have a lot of kits. I will have kits for not only the miscellany hat, but I'll have my Takush Chakao kit, my Rambler um, skeins with pattern, um, the Color Tracks hat designed by Melissa Transtrom and my yarn um, and um, flurry, the flurry cowl. So I'll have kits for five different projects at SSK and like I said any of those that are left over as soon as I get home I will put those in the shop as fast as I possibly can. Um, that will not be a regular update I'm just gonna put them in the shop for you guys so that you can get them as soon as possible if you want to use them for the knit along. Um, and all the information about the knit along is on the 90% knitting board, so check it out there. Um, let's see, I already told you mustache dash total. I don't know why I have this after all this other stuff. I should just tell you that after I talk about my knitting. Um, no questions were posted for this week, so I won't be talking about questions. But if you have a question for me, feel free to post it in the do you have questions thread on the Ravelry board. I do have a new thing to show you. Actually, I've got lots of non-knitting new things because, like I said, my mom and I went shopping. But I'm not going to show you that. This top is new. We went to Kohl's. I never shop at Kohl's because I had a bad return experience at Kohl's one time. And I'm like, yeah, screw that. Not going there again. Um, but we went to Kohl's. And we had, it was like one of those deals where, like, you had coupons and things were on sale. And it's like, you saved $5 billion. And... Okay, so we did. We got a bunch of things, which was nice because I have not had time to go clothing shopping this year, really. Like, I think I went once for a couple of things, but other than that, like, not much. So, 
got this top. It's cute. It's long. Here, I'm going to stand up. Like, I don't usually buy long tops, but this comes, like, way down below my hips. I can't even... I would jump, but that would scare everybody. Um, yeah, it comes down to, like... Almost below crotch level. It's not quite a tunic because I think it has to be sort of at least mid thigh or a little longer to be a tunic, but it's a long shirt. But it's nice and swishy and breezy and airy, and I like it. Anyway, <laughs> like you needed to know all that. Yeah, I got some other fun things too, but I'm I didn't bring them in to show you because they have nothing to do with knitting. Um, but I did get yarn because I ordered this back. It actually arrived before I left. Um, and I don't remember if I saw, I don't know where I saw the yarn and it wasn't even this colorway that I saw, but somewhere I'd seen some destination yarn posted and I think it was her shark week colorway, which was really, really cool. I love it. I would love shark week and just to keep it in the skein because it looked really cool, but I got on her, her Etsy site. Um, and I saw this. Isn't it pretty? It's called Farm Stand. And I just love it. It's like all the colors you see and the fruits and veggies and things at a farm stand. Um, this is her postcard yarn. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon, 463 yards. So it's a lighter fingering weight. Um, I'm not sure what this will be. It will probably end up being a shawl of some kind because... I don't like making socks out of really lightweight yarn because <laughs> I'm a wimp. Um, but anyway, Destination Yarn is out of Ohio. She vends at Indie Knit and Spin. At least she has, I think, the last couple of them. Um, and I keep saying she because I can't remember her name. Very sweet person. Um, I bought yarn from her, not at the last SSK, but the one... Or, Indian it and spin the one prior the one last November I got the yarn and a pad for a pattern of hers too it's a I think it's a cow it's like a big cow I haven't made it yet um, and it doesn't really count as a kit because they were separate purchases but um, so I won't be doing it for the knit along anyway she's got very very pretty yarns and they're all you know sort of destination based it's a, it's a cool theme she's got going for her for her yarn but anyway um, destination yarn in the farm stand colorway. That's my new thing. And I'm sure after I get back from SSK, I will have other new things to show you because I fully intend on shopping at the market. Because I really have not bought a lot of yarn this year. And I love shopping at SSK. You know, I was looking through the vendor list again last week because I I hadn't looked at it in a while and I couldn't remember who all was going to be there. And um, I'm like, oh, yes, I can't wait. I cannot wait to go because there's a lot of wonderful vendors going to be there. And a couple that I keep hearing about, but I've never shopped at. I've never gotten any, like, I think it's Two Guys yarn or something. So I can't wait to that. And then there's you know, the ones that I know and love, like um, Steve from, um, Steve and Andy from, uh, blah, 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 leading men fiber arts and um, Punky, another crafty girl. You know, those are ones I just always love to get. And then that fat squirrel is going to be there with her bags. And I so want to get one of her big sweater size bags. I've got one of them that I got at the last SSK. She was my booth mate. Like she was right next door, my booth neighbor. So that made it easy. I'm going to have to actually run to her shop this time to get something um but i want to get another one of her big bags because i love that size and who else who else is going to be there gail gail from gail's art will be there i'm going to show her my shawl so anyway lots of wonderful vendors are going to be at ssk including yours truly i know that makes me sound horribly conceited and that wasn't how i meant that but i will be there along with the wonderful vendors <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now because that's just going to get worse. Um, yeah, so I will leave for SSK on Wednesday. I have today and tomorrow to finish getting ready. The crazy part of my brain is planning to dye a little bit more yarn today. And it'll be dry enough for me to reskein by tomorrow because I realized I did not get to dye any of this advanced to-go yarn. And I want to take some. Um, so there will be hopefully a couple skeins of that. You know, that's the down, well, a lot of downsides. But, you know, the fact that I've had to travel a couple of times within the last month, um, unexpectedly, big chunks of time being away, 
There are some things that I usually take to shows that are just not going to be in my booth this time. And I, I'm very happy with how much I do have to take with me, but there's going to be some notable gaps. <laughs> like, I'm not taking any semi-solids this time. Um, I just, I did not have a time to do them, and what I have in stock is not nearly enough to just take. So mostly I'm leaving semi-solids at home. Um, I will have a lot of kits, though. I don't have a lot of fiber. Again, that was another thing I just didn't have time. Because semi-solids and fiber I usually do very last because they're the easiest things to dye. And so this trip last week kind of threw the screws to that. Um, so I'm sorry. But I hope you'll find other wonderful things if you're going to be at the market. Like I said, lots of kits, lots of self-striping, um, lots of gradients. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot. Sock blanks. I have lots of sock blanks with me in different, um, done with different techniques. So I, I'm blanking out on what else I have. But I do have a lot of stuff. I'm bringing a lot. Um, and it's mostly all fingering weight except some of the kit stuff. Some of the kit stuff is heavier weight. But I'll bring what I have and hopefully you'll find something that you love. I I just feel a little scattered for SSK this time because of all of this travel that I've had to do these last two trips to Florida in the last few weeks. You know, it's just been not a good time to have to travel, but I couldn't do anything about it. So anyway, um, anyway, so yes, leaving Wednesday, I'll be at the retreat Thursday and Friday, Saturday I'm vending. The morning is just for retreat attendees, but the afternoon is open to the public. So if you're in the area of Nashville, come and see the vendor market. It'll be fabulous. Um, and then Sunday, I will not, I mean, it's over Saturday. Saturday night is the closing thing. Um, Sunday, we're going to be getting up super early and driving north to Kentucky because we are going to Mammoth Caves. We have tickets to do the Wild Cave Tour. This is verging into 10% now. Um, Bill is super excited about doing the wild cave tour. I love to cave, like go caving, like crawling on your belly, getting really dirty kind of caving. I've done it a lot of time. I've done it several times in my life. I used to do it a lot when I was younger. The last time I went actually was when my oldest was still in high school and I went with him. I was one of the chaperones for a trip with the youth group. And there was a lot more of me then. Like that was before I lost those 55 pounds and everything. So I know I can do it, even larger I can do it, but you know, the thing about the Mammoth Cave, Wild Cave Tours, they say if you have any body measurements that are larger than 42 inches, you cannot get through, you will not be able to get through the smaller openings. And I said to Bill, I'm like, I have body measurements larger than 42 inches, granted not much larger, but like my chest and my hips are not 42 inch hips. They're like closer to 44, 45 inches. And he's like, you'll be fine. I've done this before. You'll be fine. It's more like if you're going to freak out and not, and I know I can squish, like those parts are squishy. <laughs> I don't know. And then we sat and we read all kinds of reviews of the wild cave tour that different people posted on different websites. And a lot of them said, you know, I'm bigger than what they say you need to be as a, as a maximum. I had no problems. And so, Fingers crossed. I, I just have to say, I'm not super excited about this. I wish I was more enthusiastic, but I'm not. I would love to see the caves, but I'm just, I think I'm just freaked out by that measurement thing. And I don't know. I think I'll be okay once I'm in there. I don't really get claustrophobic. It's not an issue because that's another thing they say. If you have claustrophobia issues, this is not a thing for you. And I think I'll be fine that way. I've never really had too many issues, but yeah, I don't know. But I don't want to tell him I'm not excited about it. And he doesn't really watch the podcast, so I don't have to worry. <laughs> because he's excited and I want to do this with him. So anyway, it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Although I just keep having a mental image of myself stuck in an opening in the cave. Kind of the way Winnie the Pooh got stuck in his window of his house trying to get out after he ate too much honey. You know, and then everybody like rabbit and everybody was pushing on his butt trying to get him out of the hole. And then finally they just had to kind of leave him there. And I think Piglet was like holding an umbrella over his head outside. And, you know, that's the image I have like, oh, well, we're just going to have to leave you in here a couple of weeks till you shrink. 
and then we'll pull you out. Um, I realize that probably won't be the case, but that's the image I've got in my mind. And so it's freaking me out a little bit, <laughs> but it'll be okay. So anyway, that's what we're doing on our way home on Sunday. Then Monday we'll drive the rest of the way home. Um, so yeah, that is SSK coming up. Oh, the other thing, when I was shopping with my mom, I found a top that I think is going to work perfectly with my wedding skirt. It's white, though. That's the only thing. I didn't really want to do a white top, but it fits me perfectly. Like, I couldn't have had, I can't make a top that is going to fit me as well as this one does. But it's white. It's like, it's a stretchy fabric, and it, but it's not clingy stretchy. Um... And it's got a, a lace overlay. It's very simple. It's not like, I don't think it's going to compete with the lace and the skirt. Um, but I'm still thinking about it. And once I get the skirt done and I can put some elastic in it and try it on, then I will be able to see that. And then I think it's going to change how I do my petticoat underneath the underskirt. Um, because I was originally going to do that. Remember, I said I was going to do that with purple to pick up the purple and the flowers. But now that I'm going to have a white top on, I think I'm going to have to do white. But I may actually do different colors. Like, I may have the top layer be white, and then maybe another layer be kind of like a sandy color, and then maybe do purple. Because there's it's going to be a fluffy, ruffly, you know, petticoat to poof the skirt out. So I think if each layer is consecutively a little bit longer, that might be kind of cool. So that is like the... This is the ever morphing wedding outfit. Honestly, it's so, I'm glad I didn't have like one particular thing set for this in my mind because it has changed countless times. But this top really, really is, it fits me perfectly. Like nothing ever fits me this perfectly. So I couldn't not buy it. Um, I mean, in a worst case scenario, if it doesn't look great with the skirt, I can still make myself a top. But fingers crossed, I may not have to. That would be great if I didn't have to add that in. So whatever. Um, okay. So let me tell you about muffin. Oh my gosh. So, you know, this trip came up rather quickly that I had to go back down to Florida. Bill was not able to go with me because it was honestly one of the two busiest weeks he has in the year. He has two weeks a year that are absolutely ridiculous because of reports and stuff that he has to file. Okay. So he couldn't go. And so I'm like, I don't know what to do with muffin because the other problem is usually my son would be here because he didn't go. None of my kids went, none of any of the grandkids went to the thing, which was fine. My mom didn't expect them to. Um, but Christopher, who would normally be here, was leaving last Friday to go on a mission trip in Canada. So he's not here as of Friday. So I couldn't leave muffin home here Friday to Sunday by herself. She'd starve and burst from not being able to go outside. So Bill's like, we'll just bring her up to the house, or he, he said, I will stop by and pick her up like Thursday, because Chris wouldn't be, he'd be leaving Friday, I was leaving Wednesday, he's like, I'll pick her up Thursday after work, bring her up to my house, and she can just be there, because like we've said, she's learned how to use the, the cat door, she can go in and out, he would be there to feed her, and we figured this would be a really good test to see how she did being left home alone like that, ooh, it's thundering, did you hear that? Anyway, he's, we decided this would be a really good test for while we were planning to leave her there for SSK. Okay, so he picks her up Thursday. Everything seems to be fine. She's up there. He takes care of her. Well, he leaves for work, you know, Friday morning. Now, we did know he had to watch to make sure she didn't dart out of the gate when he left because there's a gate at his driveway. And she did do that once to us once before. But I knew he would be watching for that, so I wasn't worried about it. And he said she wasn't even outside when he left that morning anyway. So Friday, that's the day we were, my mom wanted to go to the beach. So we went to the beach and walked around and then we went grocery shopping on the way home. So we're coming out of the grocery store and this is probably about one o'clock in the afternoon. Coming out of the grocery store, we got in the car, my aunt, had, my aunt had driven. So I'm in the back seat and I look at my phone and there's a text from a number that I don't recognize saying, I found your dog walking along such and such road in, you know, in the area where Bill lives please call me ASAP. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was like, how, how did she get out? Cause he's got all this fencing and everything. And I'm like, I'm in Florida. So I texted her back right away. Cause it had only been about 15 minutes since she texted. I said, 
thank you so much for picking my dog up. I said, I am not in town. She's staying with my fiance. I will forward your message to him and he will be in touch with you really fast. So I get on the phone and call him. <laughs> I'm like, and he answers, he's at work. He's got like 15 people in his office and he's like, what? And I told him what happened. He's And he paused for a minute and he's like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm like, I am not kidding you. I said, I'm going to forward you this stuff. I said, I'm in Florida. I can't do anything. This is on you. He's like, I'll take care of it. So I sent him the message. And like, you know, I sent him the lady's message. And about a half hour later, I get a message back from him. I'm going to pick up Muffin. We need a plan B for next week. <laughs> so he had to leave work early during this crazy busy time. Go pick up this crazy dog who found a way out of the property despite fencing and electric fencing and gates um, and go retrieve her. I mean, thankfully this woman was very nice and, you know, picked her up, but they were going to a camp and they couldn't keep my dog, obviously. So, you know, he picked her up. She was fine, not hurt. <sighs> oh, thunder again. Wow. It's like really starting to storm here. Anyway, um, so I do have my plan B back in, in place. My daughter's friend um, will be coming to stay with her as we had originally planned until Christopher gets home on Sunday or whenever. So, which will be nice because then she can also be here, watch the house, bring the mail in, take care of the cat, which, I mean, she was going to be doing that anyway, but she didn't have to stay here then. But since Muffin's here, she'll be staying here with Muffin. So anyway, craziness. This dog is just going to kill me yet <laughs> because she's so laid back usually, you know, when I'm around up there and she just wanders around. I don't know how she got out. We still can't figure out how she got out. It's a mystery. But anyway, she did. Okay, so that is it for what I have to tell you about. The little bit of shop news I want to share with you mostly is regarding SSK. I do have an SSK colorway this year that I will be bringing with me. And here it is. It's on Bounce and on Bedazzled. And it is a variegated and speckled colorway, and I called it smooth sailing sunny skies so this is the ssk 2016 colorway um here let me take i will take the label off one and show you um my inspiration for this was that um it was kind of multifold. i mean some of it was personal in that you know right now i could use some smooth sailing and sunny skies <laughs> Um, just in life, but I feel like we all could, you know, there's a whole lot of craziness going on in the world right now. Um, and we could all use just a little bit of a retreat from that. So we've got lots of blues in there, smooth sailing, sunny skies and the sunny skies. Fine. It's a little bit hard to see it in here. Um, but there's speckles. The speckles are in different sunny shades of gold and orange and red so think like a tropical sunset kind of sunny skies um there you can see that area of the yarn has more of the speckles on it some of the skins have a little bit more white in them like here's the um the bedazzled skin you can see some of them have a little bit more white than the bounce or not just necessarily a bounce, but some have more white than the others. Anyway, I will have a limited number of these with me. I think I have 24, 23 or 24 um, of these skeins. If they sell out, I will be happy to take special orders for these and dye them up for SSK attendees. Um, and then I will put this in my shop later this fall. Um, but it's not going to go in until fall because I want to keep it special just for SSK attendees first. So anyway, that will be my SSK colorway this year. I'm really happy with it. And, you know, maybe it will give you just a little sanctuary of smooth sailing and sunny skies just to play with your yarn or pet it and knit with it, whatever. Um, but that was what I was going after. Something that imbues peace and relaxation and just escape from all of the ick of the world right now, personal or worldwide or whatever. Okay, as far as updates after SSK, like I said, as soon as I get back, I'm going to put up whatever remaining kits I have. I'm going to do that as soon as I can. It will not be a regular update, but you may want to pay attention to either the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Facebook 
Facebook page or the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group, the updates thread on Ravelry. I will post in those two places. I'll probably also post on Instagram, but those are the other two places that I always post, Facebook and um, Ravelry for the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. I'll post when those are all up. Um, otherwise, I am planning to do an update of show leftovers, the rest of the show leftovers, on Friday the 29th at noon Eastern. Now, I can't say if I'm just going to have one update with show leftovers or if there'll be more. I either do one or two. Usually I do two, but I can't really say until I know how much stuff is left over from the show. So, and I will record before then anyway, so I can let you know. Um, but yeah, that however much is left over will determine if there's going to be one or two show, show leftover updates. But there will definitely be one on Friday, July 29th at noon Eastern. And there will be kits up prior to that, unless all of the kits sell out, which I can't imagine happening. But if they do, then there won't be any. But if they don't, they will be up prior to the update. All right. I think that's everything. Um, I'm going to go. I have a lot of work to get done today um, because I need to be ready to hit the road bright and early Wednesday morning. So if you're going to be at SSK, I can't wait to see you. Please say hi. Come hang out. Let's knit together. Let's eat lunch or breakfast or something together in the dining hall that always reminds me of the Great Hall in Hogwarts because it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll see you there. And if not, I will see you when I return and I will podcast probably Tuesday or Wednesday after I get back. So anyway, take care. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Since today's only Monday, have a great week. Um, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.